Hi everybody, I want to talk about how to protect yourself from misinformation and emotional manipulation. Let's talk about the CDC and the Surgeon General and their misinformation. Uh, they used selective facts and gave us a false conclusion. They told us that masks don't work and now they're telling us to wear them. Emotional manipulation, and you can use the word persuasion if you like, that's sort of a more generous term. Manipulation is kind of more negative, but uh, what are we talking about? I'm talking about social pressure. You have virtual signaling and moralizing. This is common social media uh, especially. So yesterday they were telling us hoarders are the bad people. Only buy what you normally buy so there's not enough for everyone. So they're putting social pressure on buying less items. Only enough for the day or the week. And today, we're being told by Dr. Burks, don't go to grocery stores or the pharmacy for the next two weeks. Stay home unless you absolutely have to go out. And specifically, don't go to the grocery store. So, been misled there. Okay, so why does this happen? The media does it. Okay, why does the media do it? They report whatever generates clicks and shares. It's a business model. You have to consider how their business works. They create a narrative. The narrative is designed to appeal to a certain audience and you know they, they make their money by how much that audience is motivated to share and click on that information. Now some media outlets are more obvious than others. You have CNN and MSNBC on the left and Fox News on the right. But to some extent they all do this. There's a, a competition. It's, it's a tough business now. So um, they are critics, not creators. They're not leaders. That's not necessarily a negative, just a statement of fact. They don't always try to understand those perspectives. I don't really know that they realize what they're even doing wrong. Experts. So uh, why do experts misinform? Well, they can have competing roles. They can have differing areas of focus and expertise. They can also have all the same things that normal people like us have and that are biases and agendas and you know you'll, you'll see more about that. Leaders. Leaders have to worry about how people will respond to whatever information they give. And Getting the desired result is oftentimes at odds with the accuracy and objective accuracy and completeness of that information. Social pressure. Think about psychology and sociology. And, and this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but fear. Sometimes it's a fear thing. People are afraid. They need a sense of order and control. So they engage in social pressure. They become part of a cause or they start a cause. There's a tribalism aspect. There's an us and them. Good guys versus bad guys. It generates a witch hunt mentality. Uh, there's a self-promotion. The individuals, look at me. I'm on the right side. I'm more intelligent. I'm more moral. We all do it, okay? But it can result in man emotional manipulation and misinformation. So, how do you protect yourself? First thing, don't put your faith in experts, okay? I'm not saying that they're evil. I'm not saying that the media is evil, okay? They do offer essential information. But don't blindly follow anyone. Think. Think about the information that's been presented. Understand that whoever is presenting the information, whether it's the media, whether it's a leader, whether it's an expert, they have a particular role and responsibility. And so that's why experts can sometimes disagree. They might have the same qualifications, but they're in different roles. And like leaders, experts will spin the information based on the desired response they want to get from people, from whoever the audience is. Test every emotional response. We, uh, if you, if you should look into this if you're not aware of it, but emotion often guides our reason. Okay, we have an emotional response to something, and after the fact, oftentimes our reason engages to try to make sense of that emotional response. So, in that case, we're not really reasoning, we are rationalizing. If you act out in anger against someone you love, and you say something nasty that you regret and you feel bad about, all humans do this. Your brain then start, kicks in and starts to rationalize that what you did was justified. There was, you're under a lot of stress. You're 
you know, the, the object of your anger did something wrong. Uh, you know, you try to justify an emotional response. And, you know, you, you, in the end, you make it out as if this is the situation, this is why I acted the way I acted, but it wasn't a, a, a conscious thought that caused you to act that way. You acted out instinctively, emotionally, and then the thinking kicked in later to try to make your sense of it and to make yourself feel better about yourself. Um, you have to be intentional about testing your emotions then because a lot of sources use emotions to get you to buy into whatever it is they're selling. Um, example, listen to scientists, okay? You hear that. Sounds like a reasonable, logical thing to say, right? But what's implied underneath of that? Often when people say, listen to scientists, they're implying that you don't listen to scientists or someone else, the person they're criticizing, isn't listening to scientists. So the, the subliminal message of that is, you're not listening, they're not listening, it's a manipulation, okay? Hoarding is the reason for all of our sordid shortages. Don't be a hoarder not consistent with the facts, okay? Certainly hoarding is a factor, especially the extremes, but there's a larger thing at play here than, than a few people buying too many things off the shelf. All right, develop a, a, a smell, okay? What I call the smell test. So it's an instinct to, to know when something doesn't seem right here. Now, you may have an overactive sense of smell. That may tend to push you towards the conspiracy theory where um, you know, everything is suspicious. So I'm not suggesting that, but I'm saying, you know, don't ignore inconsistencies. You don't want to confuse causation, uh, you know, correlation and causation, but don't ignore if there's an inconsistency. Easy example, obvious to me at the time. Masks don't work. Stop buying them because workers need them to be safe. That's inconsistent. Those two messages are at odds. Now, I don't know exactly what the CDC and the Surgeon General said at the time. This is what, by the time it got through the media and social media, that was the message that was coming to me. Beware of emotion behind obvious statements. I already made one example. Here's another one. Women are people too. Okay. Well, you know, factually, that's a correct statement. Okay, but it's implying that you or someone else don't believe that women are people too. So you're making an accusation without actually making an accusation. And you're planning a subliminal message to make you think something is going on, and it really may not be. Don't ignore personal experience and don't generalize it. So one mistake would be to, to think that our limited view of all the issues is the absolute truth. Okay, that would be a mistake. But another mistake would be to just check your own personal experience at the door and just blindly follow someone else. Reconcile the two. Okay, your experience has some value. It's not everything, but it has some value. Use it. And if your experience and your, your instincts and your knowledge doesn't conform to what you're being told, then work on reconciling that. And that's where you start to develop a sense of smell and better knowledge and things. Same with false dichotomies. We're filled with false dichotomies now, right? I've been calling it binary thinking. Uh, you know, is it the economy or is it health, the public health? It's both. There's a ton of them out there, okay? We're always being told, pick A or B, A or B. And too often, you know what? There's value in A, there's value in B, and the truth is somewhere in between. Um, resist oversimplifications. You can do it sometimes to manage your own fear. I want to feel that things are okay. I want to, so I'm going to accept the oversimplified answer. Or it can be used against us to stoke anger. Uh, you know, things like women are people too, okay? Is just be aware that oversimplifications can be used to stoke anger and you can use them to manage your own fear. Okay, let's talk about diversity of thought, diversity of experience, okay? Understand other people have different perspectives than you based on their education, their life experience, their skill set, the jobs that they've held, and, and we're just made differently. So there's value in those different perspectives and experience. An artist is different than an engineer. Which one's right? Guess what? They're both right. A leader, scientist, 
We've been told that we had to pick one of those two recently. You can't pick one or the other. They both have a role. They're both right. Politician versus a businessman. A financial person versus an operations person within a business. A physician treating patients versus a physician in a regulator role. You're going to get two different perspectives, right? A uh, politician versus a frontline worker. To give you an example, Customs and Border Patrol. You know, if you listen to what the politicians say about the border situation, it can be you have you know diametrically opposed data and, and, and statements and reality and which is the upside. That can be cleared up a lot if you listen to what Customs and Border Patrol agents, where you can find them interviewed or where you can find resources to get that perspective. And the same is we've recently had issues between activism and law enforcement. Okay. Look for that perspective on the boots on the ground, as well as what people are saying in the public sphere. Rarely is one side the definitive side. Look to understand the other person. Don't just look to prove you're right and to prove them wrong all the time, okay? Make sure you're not listening any longer. You're no longer learning. If you assume you're right and they're wrong and it's a binary issue, you cease to learn anything new. Um, it's, it's usually not an either or. It's usually both. So you reconcile the two, okay? When you have two competing things, reconcile. And don't reconcile it by saying that other person is stupid or bad. Uh, you know, that's not reconciling. That's taking them out of the conversation. That's dismissing their perspective altogether. There are moral absolutes. There is such a thing as a right and a wrong. I'm not telling you to suspend judgment, okay? I'm telling you to make sure that you have all the information when judging right and wrong, good and bad, okay? Because facts can be spun against you. They can deceive. They can be used to persuade you. And, you know, so yes, there are moral absolutes. I'm not saying that all, anything goes. Every opinion is every uh, accurate. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying but you have to hear those out. And you have, to, you, you, should, you have to learn from that. And the better you get at this, the better you'll be able to inoculate yourself against misinformation and manipulation. Your opinions and your positions on social issues, political issues, they really don't mean a whole lot, okay? I'm calling that a first world priority. Um, perfect example, pandemic, before the pandemic, it was all about our, our opinions and our positions and we're right and they're wrong. Suddenly that's not all that important, is it? Why not? Because it really doesn't impact you. It really doesn't impact the world or your life in, in that direct and significant way. The real priorities are found by understanding your role. What is your role? What are your responsibilities in your job, in your family, in your community, okay? And prioritize that from the bottom up because if no one's taking care of your family, if you're not taking care of your family, nobody is. If you're not looking out for your interests, nobody is, okay? You just got to understand that no person out there, no institution is really looking out for you. You have to, okay? If you're going to sacrifice personally or your family is going to sacrifice personally to the benefit of others, that's awesome. That's noble. Jesus said, carry the burdens of others, but be informed, okay? If you're doing those things, not even realizing what sacrifice you're making, that's not love, okay? That's you being used. So. Be completely informed, be completely aware of the sacrifices that you're making and make that choice. So I'm not saying, you know, take care of your family and let people die in the streets. I am not saying that whatsoever. I am not saying don't put yourself at risk, don't sacrifice to help others. Absolutely not. Just be completely aware of what those risks and sacrifices are so you can make the right choices. Okay, so focus on the information that directly impacts your life, that dictates your actions, your decisions, and your behaviors, okay? Voting is important, but in reality, how much does that vote impact your life? So that's a simple way to, that I look at it. I hope that that helps. Please subscribe. I'm try still trying to get to 100 subscribers so I can do a custom URL, like the video, uh, watch some others, and, uh, you know, have a great day. Be blessed.